What is going on everyone? My name is Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the sky blue color playing as Loki. His name is Squash, his partners today in the yellow color playing as Poseidon. I already reacted to this, but playing as Poseidon, his name is Player. And finally, in the blue color, playing as Loki, his name is Joe. Wait, that's the wrong way. Playing as Uranus, his name is Gold Lion. Bit of a spoiler there. Together, they made the team F2, Fade 2. Their opponents today in the green color, playing as Odin, his name is Shelty. As Odin, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Exciting times to be had here. Uh, in the red color, playing as Uranus, his name is Scardi. And finally, rounding out the team in the blue color, playing as Loki. His name is Joe, and together they make the deities of death. And this is RTSL Mold. Moldy? Moldy, moldy, moldy. As one thing that makes this map really, really interesting, as I, this is possibly the first time I've ever seen it, is that it's incredibly close spawns on this location. Uh, Joe and Player are literally right next to each other. That's why I was like, they've got to be on the same team, right? But no, they're not. Joe is closer to Player is than Squash is to his partner, Gold Lion, which means Gold Lion is on an absolute island over here, which should allow DoD an incredibly strong early game here against Gold Lion because we have the Odin versus Uranus matchup and Gold Shelty loves this matchup. He loves playing Odin here on this one, and we'll see how things are going to be eventuating here in this game. Relics on the map, we do have the Arrows of Ulfar, extra 20% building uh, line of, of building building damage there. Uh, we've also got over here uh, the Mithril Horseshoes. That's going to be a big, big key relic here for a uh, player to be picking up, so we'll see what's going to happen as this one moves in, but I, I absolutely love this here by player. One thing that he is gaining a, a lot right now is this hunt, and guess what? He's got... Oh, I thought he had hunt back here, but it doesn't look like he does. He does have this caribou over here, but he hasn't really yet found his aurochs, which have to be somewhere on this map moving forward as you see the temple coming up for joe he's going to be finishing up his aurochs over here and seeing what else can happen moving in over here as we see the scardi units just happily finding all their food here and having a really really good early game sheldy oh, look at that snowy pine there could you ask for a better straggler tree could you ask for a better that's absolutely huge for Shelty moving forward here in this game as uh, he's not had to get an ox card here, which means he's going to get a very, very early advance time. Very, very strong, uh, strong advance time. He will have to get the ox card now, but here's one thing that we, we're going to have to worry about moving forward in this game is that wood lines are very, very bad here on this map. As if you take a look over here at what's happening, you've got a wood line here, a wood line here, and a wood line here for gold line. However, if you come over uh, onto Shelty's point of view, he's got only, he's got these three wood lines as well, but they're kind of all over the shop. They're really forward, really far away, so he's going to have a tough time defending uh, those in this game. So we'll see how things are going to go as Freya's on the way now for Shelty. If we take a look over here, we've got the Prometheus. No surprises there. We've got the Force Eddie. No surprises there. Do we see Ares? No, we've got the Hermes here for player moving forward. Uh, and we've got the four city coming through for Joe. Really no surprises here in this game. And finally, Scardi with the Prometheus here. We'll see how things are going to eventuate here in this game as more houses coming up. Husbandry on the way for Shelty. Really, really early here as well with that husbandry. So we'll see what his plan is where that's concerned. But he's happily eating up on this food over here. He's got the, the polar bear there as well that he can eat. Scouting around with that raven. Going to be looking for a forest fire really, really early. Now, you do have to remember forest fire plus the uh, shockwave here is a real threat especially against, uh, I'm not sure if you're quite going to be able to kill off a citizen with forest fire or not, but it's it's a real big threat here to use it either like over on the Poseidon player or on the uh, or on the, the squash villagers here as well to get a huge early game advantage. So uh, DoD have used that once before, so we'll be keeping an eye on that and seeing what the plan is, where that's concerned here. As the Raven does spot this villager over here, the, there's not going to be any... 
Uh, there's not going to be any forest fire just yet, as we do see the forest fire over there. There's the shockwave on this location, and he gets one villager only there. There's a big forest fire, a big, big uh, win there in the early stages for DoD, but... That's been that 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 god power combination has been known to really end games early, and Squash is going to be really happy. He only lost one villager there, uh, moving forward. So beautiful play there by, well, kind of lucky play by Squash, I guess. But we will be seeing the troll getting taken down as Joe moves into his base there, losing that one's not the best. As Squash moves away, picks up his relic. Happy days. We do see this villager over here. Uh, trying to shank away Squash from this location as Scardi coming over here. He gets himself a handful of units, unfortunately, heroizing the, uh, the Terma there. But they should be able to take out that troll moving forward here in this game. If we move over here and check out what's happening in Shelty space, he's going double Ulfsark here as the uh, as the troll is retreating away and will indeed be going down there as the uh, hearse are going to be turning around onto this one. We see Fall of Fans coming through really, really early here for Joe as he's going to have a slight advantage where that's concerned. Meanwhile, over here we are starting to see the uh, Hippocon coming out on this position as we see Hippocon versus those Hursa. We'll see if that's going to be going the wayside of player here. If we take a look at his uh, his relic here, he did get the horseshoes, the Mithril horseshoes, so he does get that extra 10% Cavalry move speed moving forward here in this game as we're now starting to see those Ulfsarks are moving out. Lone Wanderer is on the way and where is Shelty going to be heading? He's been scouting all around this map looking for squash villages here to be raiding and look at this. That's where the villagers are right now, and that is exactly where Shelty is sending his Ulfsark. He's going to spot those, and Squash is going to be in a very, very difficult spot here. We've got one Hero Mamilo here to cause a little bit of problems. Squash still not reacting. He's going to start losing some villagers now. Beautiful find here for Shelty moving forward. One villager down. He's going to pick off two villagers here. He's trying to get a surround on this, get as many villagers as he possibly can. Two villagers going down over on this location. Three villagers going down as the rest will make make their way into this main base of Gold Lion to their safety here. Meanwhile, over here, we do see the Promethean looking for some sort of raid over here. We've got the Hursa still roaming around the map here. Joe still happily uh, gathering his Aurox over on that position there, but he is making some real nice raids as the walls coming down. Squash is the one in a in a tough position now. Having lost that, that food there, we do see the Hursa turning around onto this one. There's only four Hursa here. You probably could turn around with those Ulsark and take that fight, as we do see that's exactly what's going to be happening, and in that moment, Squash does say, alright, fine, we'll turn around, no problems. Scardi going to be chasing Squash on this position as well, as Squash is trying to micro several different locations at once, as we see on this position over here, the army of Goldline starting to push in, putting some pressure onto Sh Shelty, saying, Shelty, you got to defend yourself, my friend. You have to defend yourself. The house is going to start going down the gold line over here in a very defensible position. However, just about to be going down, we see watchtowers coming up over here as Gold Lion has to kind of retreat back. We see the houses coming down. We see the dwarves now starting to get taken down here as well. Meanwhile, over on this position, the Hursa for Squash have been thwarted there as the whole sucks coming through here. Squash getting pushed off of that Gold Mine there. Tons of dwarves getting taken down as the uh, Loki is always going to be the port of call here for the, uh, for, the, for the attacking, the best place to attack. The villagers on this wood line do get spotted. Shelter not paying attention here. He's going to be losing a ton of villagers there. One more going down. Beautiful play by Goldline. He is playing out of his mind in this game thus far. Look at that score lead there at 1,500. Way, way in front of Scardi, Joe, Shelty, and Squash, and Player. Moving forward in this game, we do see the Hippocon now starting to come out for Player. Going to be searching around the map to do everything he possibly can. The, uh, the iron here over here will end up falling. Joe does defend that nicely here, but now we're going to need a little bit of assistance over here in the main base of Shelty. He's got a lot of idle dwarves, a lot of idle villagers moving the uh, villagers over onto that wood line at the back over there the old start going to be returning back home here to try and defend as more units are falling but shelty has lost a lot uh, moving forward here. He's trying to throw up more houses around his town center as the uh, the tower is going to be sitting here going to get taken down very very uh, quickly here as well as that tower does get taken out. More houses and getting thrown up onto this position as the Ulfsark trying to push through over here. We see the Hursa can start taking down the uh, Promethean here, but Shockwave getting dropped onto this position here as Shelty is finally getting back with his initial raiding force of Ulfsark, but he is in a very, very difficult position moving forward. Meanwhile, we do see the Hippocon checking out that town center. We see the citizen has been pulled back as Joe is going to be trying to cut that one off with his own Hursa over here. Meanwhile, over here, we are seeing the raids coming through for 
squash as he's taking down two villagers. Two villagers jump into that tower over there as the ox cart gets into the town center as squash going to be pulling back here nicely. So we see player retreating back to the top of the map here. The Hursa have defended this location, but the big problem moving forward here is going to be can Gold Lion continue this pressure and keep this on the back foot. Meanwhile, we are seeing the raids coming through here for Joe, but the, the, the Hippocon here are so fast for player. He's actually just been max lucky here. Huge shockwave getting thrown down onto that position as the Dwarves trying to retreat back in, but still going to be picking off a handful of Dwarves here. While one Dwarf does fall, two Dwarves over there do actually end up losing their lives as Shelty going to be attempting to push in here and take down some of these units as best as they can. Meanwhile, over here, Ulfsark still distracting left, right, and center as best as he possibly can. The villagers returning back in onto this main town center. They can eat those very, very fattened goats here in this game as the gold mine's just about to fall over here. The Hippocon still searching around the map looking for raids here. Here and over here, we do see that Squash has ma managed to find Joe's villagers here, and this is absolutely gigantic moving forward. More dwarves coming over onto this position. Bragi has come through, though, for Joe, Joe not paying attention. He's going to be losing so many dwarves. The ox cart can be going down. Pickaxe just about to get through on that uh, on that ox cart there as the Hursa searching around on this position. They do find a ton of villages there for player player going to be retreating nicely. He does have himself the watchtowers up already, but that's so many dead villages there. Beautiful, beautiful raid by Squash as we do see some units now coming through for Skadi to try and push player away from this position. Nice one there as players Hippocon do start getting taken down. We are seeing Goldline now going to be starting to search around the map, searching for the villages up here which do get spotted as Shelty is going to be attempting to retreat away. Is there going to be a, uh, a shockwave available here? There is no shockwave available for Gold Lion as we do see the Gold Lion units coming through going to attempt to take some more damage over here as the raid's still looking around on this location. We see the Hippocon coming over here but those are Heroic Age uh, so they're going to be able to win that fight very very easily. We see Aphrodite coming through as the Hippocon will be retreating. Joe's still in a decent position. However, he needs to somehow defend against this location location over here. This is his only gold mine moving forward. We do see the Hursa turning around to take out Joe's Hursa here. The Ox Cart getting taken down by that Valkyrie. A second Valkyrie going to be coming up here as Joe going to be retreating away as Joe's in a very, very tough position trying to manage that one as best as he possibly can here. We see the Hursa coming back over here as the villagers getting pulled off of this gold mine over here. It might be worth it to just throw that flaming weapons down, force a ceasefire on this position and get just a little bit of reprieve here for Shelty as Shelty does manage to get this gold mine over here. A handful of units here for uh, for Scardi coming through to defend this location. Meanwhile, the dwarves still getting raided over here as Joe just simply in such a awful position after those Hursa have just caused such difficult stuff there. We see the flaming weapons getting dropped over here. The Poseidon Hippocon going to be retreating away and there is the ceasefire getting dropped as Joe says, we need a ceasefire here. Gold Lion is absolutely huge. He's gotten two towns and as he's dropping his armory down, he's gotten all these units. He's in a really, really good spot. Shelty is in a, a, a very difficult spot here moving forward as the villagers moving over onto this wood line over here to do what they can as the heavy infantry is going to be coming through for Scardi moving forward. We'll see what's going to happen. We do have that Stymphalian bird here to get some pressure on walls starting to come up, but there's very, very difficult to, to defend these gold mines. You need a huge long wall to get all the way over to this snowy pine there, but you have to be doing it unless you want to lose all of your units as we see more villagers coming over onto this gold mine over here. Uh, Joe does have a ton of farms up, but he's in a very very difficult spot. We'll see how things are going to go. This game is kind of going to be on the back of Scardi moving forward as both Shelty and Joe have been significantly uh, significantly destroyed in this game. Meanwhile, over here we do see, look at the raids from Squash. He's just continuing to get this pressure done. Left, right, and center. He's going to be able to pick off two citizens here if he micros just a little bit, but it looks like we are seeing a handful of units now coming through for Scardi to defend this one. The units now pushing onto this position as Shelty has to pull back his villages. The Ulfs are going to be leaving this location here as well, looking for some sort of raids as that Mamillo does get taken down. Meanwhile, on this position over here, we do see another raid coming in over here as Squash is absolutely unrelenting on these gold mines. The ox cart goes down. The Hursa retreat away. We're seeing the uh, the yellow units looking to come back over and hit this gold mine yet again as it looks like more raids coming over onto this position. We see the Ulfsark searching around here. They are going to be looking to take down some of these citizen of Gold Lion. But Gold Lion here, he's got a mana. It's going to take a long time.
time to deal with that. We see Scardi now coming through for Shelty. The question is going to be, can he get to uh, Scardi before Flaming Weapons gets dropped here? by Squash, because Squash is already in the Heroic Age, and he hasn't cast that Flaming Weapons just yet. So we'll see what's going to happen here, as it looks like Player is now starting to converge onto this position over here. This Scardi is going to be absolutely huge if F2 decide to go for a huge all-in onto Scardi here with the uh, with the Flaming Weapons, the Hippocon, and everything else. Meanwhile, this location still under attack. The villagers turning around, trying to shank this down as best as they can as the Ulfsar coming back over here. Uh, Shelty is struggling so mightily hard here as Hecate is coming through, but not only Hecate is coming through, so too is Artemis coming through for player as F2 is getting closer and closer to an, an, an unlosable position here. As we see over here, the uh, units of, of Shelty do get caught out. Walls are all up for Squash. Those old Sark raids looking for something to uh, find. He's just not able to do it just yet. We see Tia now coming through for Squash. This is going to be the biggest one town center timing you will ever see here. We've got Artemis coming through, we've got Hecate coming through, we've got Thimblewind coming through, we've got Flaming Weapons coming through. This is all converging on the same position here as we do see the game here is uh, lagging out, unfortunately. <laughs> as we have to wait and uh, see what's, uh, if this is getting, gonna be uh, able to be fixed. Let's GG, Joe wants to, wants to tap out here. The game is very, very, very difficult to uh, to continue here in this one. As Scardi does decide, yep, there's the tap out. Shelty taps out as well. GG, I would really love to see that Mythic Age timing hit and just absolutely erase the uh, the DoD team from this game, but it doesn't it doesn't get we don't get to see it unfortunately <laughs> but that was such a ridiculously well executed game here by f2 i mean you have to say f2 did get lucky with the uh with the relic there for the poseidon player but they made full use of it the early game he was so well played by shelty but there was no real good communication by dod to defend uh shelty if if scardi came over and defended shelty then there was nothing. There was nothing really here for Goldline to get an advantage in, and it could have just been Scardi against uh, against Goldline, and then it could have been Shelty trying to raid all onto uh, onto Squash here, causing tons of problems, and then just a one v one with Joe versus uh, Joe versus player here. It would have been a really really nice way to play this one, but they didn't go for it, and. Dod uh, does lose this one. Gold Lion playing out of his mind in this series. Uh, two wins for F2. You're going to be on game point. If you guys are enjoying this series and enjoying this tournament and all the other good stuff, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.